wonder if I need to pull down blinds. No animal naturally seeks captivity. Should I pull down the blinds or is it better now? Do you want me to try to pull the blind? It looks like it's better now. Yes, this comes up more. And fear, loneliness, and pain. I've never seen such old equipment in my life. Tens of thousands of monkeys are stolen from their families every year to be used in laboratory research. Thousands more are taken from their mother's arms to serve as pets. For some reason, humans feel entitled to raise these babies in an unnatural habitat with unnatural habits, oftentimes extracting teeth and other horrific practices in an attempt to force them into the ideal pet. Casey arrived at the sanctuary after 29 years of solitary confinement. The face in her mirror was her only friend. Staring for hours each day into the mirror, she became more withdrawn and lonely. She didn't even try to feed that mirror. Luckily for Casey, her human saw her sadness and contacted Jungle Friends. Today, Casey has real monkey friends. She no longer needs the monkey in the mirror. We welcomed Casey just as we've welcomed countless others over the years. Jungle Friends gives each monkey a safe and happy place to eat, play, socialize, and live out the rest of their lives without fear and in peace. Precious monkeys settle in for a peaceful night of slumber, knowing that tomorrow their lives will be filled with exploration, friendships, and plenty of playtime. Give <laughs> me a high five, everyone. We never gave up. We don't give up. <laughs> now, if we can get the PowerPoint to work, that'd be great. This is some really good video that you, you must have had a professional. He donated it, his time. We got it donated. He's amazing. So you're going to click this button to move them forward. Is there a clicker or just the yeah, No, the clicker. Click, the clicker didn't work for me. Did you get it working oh, well, before? we can get it to work. Okay. Uh, let's focus Start on the big, yeah. Set up slides, shall we? Start talking. Okay, so this is, um, this is a PowerPoint about, uh, it's called Healing Against All Odds. And uh, we get a lot of monkeys from a lot of kind of crazy places. Most of them come from laboratory research and others, the um, ex our expats and the pet trade um, entertainment industry. So a lot of the monkeys get here to Jungle Friends that are broken. So there's um, a lot of work that we do with the monkeys. So I'll try to... Okay, so you can just... Okay, are you ready? Yes, so we have a lot of special needs monkeys at Jungle Friends. 
and I'll tell you about a few of them. We also do rehabitats where we build the habitats. We've had a lot of monkeys where the vets have said, you really just need to euthanize this monkey rather than amputating um, their, their leg or um, some are blind. We've got a lot of diabetics. This little guy was paralyzed from the waist down, so we built this habitat where he could pull himself around with ropes and also climb on the ladders. We set little things up where he could reach and start using his legs. So you can go to the next one. And then this is Wendell. Wendell was diabetic, and he was self-attacking. He had neuropathy, which I don't know if you know what that is. It's like, the, it's like when you feel how, when your foot goes to sleep, that tingling sensation. And he, of course, didn't know what it was. And would start attacking himself. He chewed up his, his hand, he bit off a toe, and um, he found out he was diabetic, so he was on insulin. He's still on a little bit of insulin and some oral medications now, but he did go blind from the diabetes. Um, and he's um, since had to, uh, we've rebuilt his habitat. This is okay, this is good. You did good. <coughs> okay, well, I guess it knew to go. So, <laughs> and this is Wendell. And he has really good friends that take care of him and groom him uh, when we reintroduced him back to his habitat. Fortunately, he was in several habitats. We moved him around to different habitats. So he knew several of them before he went blind, so he knew how to negotiate. And we built these big runways uh, for our older monkeys, too, the geriatrics and the blind monkeys, so that they can get up to their food, up to their heat area, heated area, up to their indoor area. And um, he's just learning how to use this ramp. So we're, <laughs> he's not quite sure where it goes, but he knows that feeling. So we've got the ramps everywhere now that go up to all of his runways, and he can get around um, his habitat much easier. And we do that for the geriatric monkeys also. So... Hi, Wendell. <laughs> he since had to have both of his eyes removed because he was getting infections. You know, when you're blind, you can't see things coming at you to blink. So he would get infections in his eyes, and the vet did say that you can go ahead and forward. The vet did say it would be better just to remove his eyes for his sake. He couldn't see anyway, and then he wouldn't get the infections. You can go to the next slide. Uh, and this is Jersey. Jersey was a pet that they, he'd started, he was six years old and started attacking people and biting and wasn't the cute little baby monkey they were bottle feeding. So he slowly got moved further and further away from the family, ended up in the garage. So he really started self-attacking and biting off his toes and, and really mutilating himself. So the vets wanted to put him to sleep. Um, and we got him to Gainesville, talked to my vet who was not he didn't feel comfortable amputating his leg, so we had to talk to several surgeons to find someone who would do it because they felt like they, he wouldn't have quality of life. And I tried to tell them, but we have monkeys with one leg. We have a monkey walks on our hands. We have blind monkeys. I promise you I will not let this monkey sit in a cage and suffer. Just amputate his leg, and let's go from there. So he did have to have one leg amputated and most of his uh, foot the other foot was amputated, but, and it was cut off straight down, but we worked it and worked it. He lived in my guest room for three months, and now it's like a little part of a foot. If you go to the next slide, you can see how, how well he's, he's doing. Well, this, okay, I forgot about this video. This is when he was um, still bandaged up um, on his one leg, and that's the foot that we did. We did save that leg and most of the foot. And, but you can see, even with the cat, he, see how he uses his tail? And he still uses his tail. Okay, good night, Jersey. <laughs> so, I mean, if you've got a tail, who needs two legs, right? So, so he did really great, and um, he, was, he was amazing. He was six years old, and now you wouldn't know, if you saw him flying around his habitat, you wouldn't know he was missing a leg because you just wouldn't be able to tell. And there was another monkey, Elizabeth, who is his life partner right now. And he met her in the clinic. She actually had got toxoplasmosis, which um, 
from cat. We have a lot of feral cats at uh, Jungle Friends. We, are, we catch them and get them snipped and find homes for them as we go. But she got Toxo, and they met each other in the clinic. And now they're happily together. So <laughs> it's a love story. <laughs> So, and here's Jersey now. I mean, he came, he was so tiny, you know, and I, you saw the picture with the cone on his head and his hands were wrapped up and his feet wrapped together and he weighed about four pounds and then he weighed nine pounds. He was too big. Now he's gotten back to be a little bit more normal. <laughs> and then this is Katie. She had liver and kidney disease and she was found, a woman wanted to buy a pet marmoset. So she went to the breeder to buy her baby marmoset and saw how these monkeys were living in this horrible, filthy conditions. So she decided she would buy all of them and breed the monkeys herself. And then she found out you had to steal the babies from the mothers and how horrible that was. She saw that too and decided that that was not a good idea. I don't know why it's going on its own, but oh well, that's okay. Anyway, so she rescued them, realized that she couldn't steal their babies either, brought them to Jungle Friends, and they had a lot of problems, but we did, we were able to get through, oh, it's all right, I'll talk as, as we go. So, and our motto is we never give up. <laughs> so we do have a lot of uh, monkey miracles. You can go ahead and push it since it's not going this time. Um, and this is Udi, love, love of uh, Amy's life. Udi came with such severe metabolic bone disease, he was only 14 months old, and you can see where his wrist is turned out, and his, uh, he had an overbite that was so bad that it must have been very painful for him to eat because he w weighed hardly anything. He's just this tiny little thing. He couldn't stand, and he just scooted around. So, and 14 months old, to have that severe metabolic bone disease from no sunshine and not a good diet, they found him in New York in a basement without food or water. And monkeys are illegal in New York, so um, he was confiscated. And you can go. So there's baby Udi. Here's Udi Monster, we call him now. <laughs> and he just is, he's a teenager now. He runs around like this. He's got three girls living with him. And, he, <laughs> and he's just, he's crazy. But uh, everybody loves Udi, and he just loves the girls. Anytime girls, ooh, 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 you know, Belle, please. He thinks the world revolves around him. They all do. Well, that's okay. This, that's Udi. And then this is Dylan. Dylan was confiscated from someone who had a pet monkey illegally, and he was so fragile and malnourished he couldn't even lift his head. So it was in North Carolina or South Carolina, and he wasn't even... Um, well enough to, that's right, well enough to travel, so he went to a zoo until he was. Came to Jungle Friends, met Monkers and Zoomy. This is Monkers hugging him, that's Zoomy carrying him around. So they became his surrogate mama and auntie. And this monkey doesn't have any of the weird self grasping and rocking and digit sucking or anything that usually the pet monkeys have because he was so, we got him when he was so young that he was able to learn monkey life. Now he's just a wild, crazy boy, and he's, a lot, he's, he's almost too big for Zoomy there, but he's, he's bigger than both of those monkeys now. And he still tries to ride on him if he gets spooked. They're like, I think we need a bigger monkey. <laughs> so, but it's amazing if you could get the monkeys young enough and get them with other monkeys, then they grow up to be more natural and have a, have a wonderful monkey life. And they're still together now and doing great. And you can go ahead and forward. And then this is Bongo. Bongo is the paraplegic. He was actually in iron toxicity studies and some other horrible studies at a university um, that they were doing, and we got him out of the lab, and he was at Jungle Friends for 10 years, and then all of a sudden was paraplegic. Took him to the vet school. They said that he had ruptured a disc. He would never walk again, and he needed to be euthanized. And so we said, well, we're going to see what we can do. So we built the rehabitat so we could walk around, and we started putting little platforms of food, so his favorite food, so he'd really have to reach up and um, get his food. You can go to the next one. And um, his, that's how we maneuvered him around. And you can go one more. And we introduced him to Casey. Now, Casey, who'd been alone for so many 
years, species isolated, as was Bongo at the lab, and then to not be able to, you know, have her friend. And this is when he couldn't walk at all. And he's scared and nervous because he was a lab monkey and does not have any use for humans. Um, didn't want us near him, but we had to go in, and he had urine burns, so we were taking care of him. We thought, you know what, he really hates this. Let's let see what Casey will do for him. And Casey took such great care of him. She, she cleaned him up. She brought him food. And I walked by one day, and he started walking. He walks even better than this now, <clears throat> but just started walking. So I sent the video to... Yes, he's walking now. Now he walks a little stiff-legged, and he's got some arthritis. Back to life. Yeah, and I sent the video to the UF, to the uh, vet school there, and I said I just sent the video to him, and he just responded, "I'm glad you didn't kill him." <laughs> like, yeah. But so many, we see so many monkey miracles. I don't, you know. And Elizabeth, they, the blood work that I sent to the vet, um, you know, Jersey's companion, they thought looking at the blood work that she was was not alive and they thought we were going to you know oh, you're going to have to look at euthanizing her but we just we have a hospice care policy so we try to do everything that we can and we really believe that Casey helped him you know I don't know what it was but but he's walking now it's called love. is that what it's called okay yeah. <laughs> so it was amazing and then this is Bonnie. Bonnie was captured in the wild, stolen from her family, and then was in a breeding facility. And she had baby after baby stolen from her year after year after year. And that is the facility where I saw a baby stolen from, uh, from the mom. And so, you know, we don't, at sanctuaries, this was over 20 years ago. I didn't even know what a sanctuary was. You're not supposed to buy animals. But these animals were all going to Lolly Brothers Auction, if anybody knows what that is, where they auction off animals. So I bought all of his animals. He had all different kinds. She was one of them. And she had uh, a baby. She was pregnant when she came. She got to raise her baby on her own. But she did suffer a stroke. She's an old lady. And um, we thought we were saying our goodbyes to her and everything. But we'd, we'd take in her food and feed her and take good care of her. And this was over a year ago. And we thought we were saying goodbye. And now she's doing great. Bailey's too rambunctious to be with her, her son. But, so she's with an older monkey named Cuddly, who was also from the same breeder. Her name was Ugly, inappropriately named. And so we changed it to Cuddly because it sounded kind of alike. And I don't think this video plays, so go ahead and go through that. But that was about showing Bonnie walking around. She still walks a little crooked, but she gets around just fine, and she's in one of our rehabitats. And this is Chi-Chi. Chi-Chi has since passed, but she was diagnosed with breast, breast cancer, and we were told that it had metastasized and gone into her lymph nodes, and she only had a few months to live. She ended up living for over three years, so with her friends and her family. And um, that was her surgery. But she, like I said, she, she's a little old lady, don't know how old she was. She was in a circus. And now, you know, she's, she's gone now. But she got to die with her friends all around and her monkey friend with her. And so that's what we try to do is to allow them to live and we allow them to die. And, and then this is Curry. Did you meet Curry? Yeah, the first time I met Okay, well... Yeah, Curry was, yeah, was very sweet little squirrel monkey. And she couldn't get around. She walked like in circles because some of her parts worked better than others. So she just kind of did circles. So we'd just take her outside and, and show her to the other monkeys. And Sarah would do, you know, um, rotate her arms and uh, legs. We had to give her fluids from time to time and feed her. But she lived a good life. And you know, lived with the other squirrel monkeys and had, you know, people around to care for her and, until she passed, you know, naturally. And then, okay, so I think that's it. So that's what we do. We do have hospice care, and I don't know if any of you are familiar with hospice, but my mom was in hospice, my dad, my grandma. It's ama an amazing, um, amazing philosophy. So we do the same at Jungle Friends. And um, we've had miracles, you know, happen because of that. So those are some of our monkeys at Jungle Friends.
<coughs> Does anybody have any questions? Can we come visit? Yes, we would like everyone to come and visit. We do have a wonderful volunteer program, and we have internships and apprentices, and we have work vacations. Or they call them staycations or something like that? Workations. <laughs> Workations. So you can come. We have facilities right on site where you can stay right there and just be immersed in monkeys. There's almost 300 monkeys there. And you can come and work with us. Um, you guys are in Florida? Gainesville, Florida. Mm hmm uh -huh. Do you have any criteria for the monkeys that you accept in? Like, is there sometimes where a monkey is too like, aggressive or something that you can't be in it? Or is there just any kind of Our criteria, we mostly we deal with a lot of special needs monkeys <clears throat> because some sanctuaries aren't able to give the monkeys some of the care that we can, like giving them insulin injections. We have runways where we can get them in and squeeze them and train them to take their injections. Um, some places can't. So my heart always goes to the old monkeys and the, the geriatrics and, and the monkeys that, need, that have special needs. So that's who we get first. How yes. monkeys are currently awaiting sanctuaries and there Yeah, well, we have about 24 monkeys on our waiting list. We have three labs on our waiting list. Um, the problem is that the monkeys just don't come with a lot of money. Um, we can't find any monkey people. Do we have monkey people here? Yeah. I know you're a monkey person, Priscilla. <laughs> monkey person? Okay. Do we have any dog people? Cat people? Bird people? Tiger people? Chimp people? So there's a lot of, we call them the sexy animals or the animals that you have met. Um, sexy animals are the wolves and the chimpanzees and the tigers that everyone knows what they are. People don't know what monkeys are. Actually, they're the ones with the tails. You know? <laughs> so there's a lot of education that goes with it first. Well, what do you mean? I thought they were all getting out of the lab. The chimps are, the monkeys aren't. There's over 100,000 in labs right now. And they're getting more and more. They're setting up huge breeding facilities now. So it's not, it seems like it's getting better. It's, Getting better in the sense that they are letting them be released to sanctuaries. They're not coming with money, um, usually, almost never. Um, but they are not just killing them, which is typically what they've done. Yeah, Priscilla? To the point, I really do want to know the answer to the question. Okay. Um, how many males are you able to get together from uh, conclusions that aren't normally social with a mix of females? We, use, we have more males and females because they have more males in the labs. Not sure why, maybe less parts to go wrong. But we have a whole bachelor group of 26 males. And we, we put the males together and we don't have any females near them. Very interesting. That's, are, they, are they fighting a lot or every once in a while? Every once in a while. And when they fight, you know, they rip each other up pretty yeah. badly. They'll be together for years and then decide they hate each other. <laughs> what happened? You love each other, you know. They're having sex, they're sharing food, and all of a sudden they decide they're going to kill the other monkey. So, you know, it's kind of like people, and you, you just never know. Uh, usually a male will be fine with a female, but we have a lot more males than females. Are you finding the same thing? Yeah, that sometimes, you know, even to get two males together with four to six females, and it's, it's just very tricky. Yeah. There's no exact science. I know. Get in in the morning, and somebody is really beat up, and you've got to sew them up, and then you've got to weigh. Do I try it again yeah. with these two guys, or is this a repeat? And you know, we don't all have those answers. Do we? I know. I always just say three strikes are out. I try three times, and the third time I say, you know, <laughs> I don't know why I just picked that out, but at the third time they have another fight, then I find them a new friend. Okay. <laughs> uh huh. It probably could. I think that monkeys, because they're wild animals and they have a really strong survival instinct, if a limb's gone, they'll use their tail, or if they can't use either, they'll walk on their hands. They don't, they're not as, I don't want to say wimpy as humans, but they're, they're, they're just automatically figure out how to work around it. But I don't know why he walked again. The vets don't know why either. So I don't know. Uh huh. 
Well, they, we feed them a lot of fruits and vegetables, of course. That's their, their favorite thing. They get that. And um, then the uh, spider monkeys are vegetarians by nature, and they have teeth that look like ours because we are too. And the capuchins, you saw the big, you know, they are omnivores, but they very rarely eat meat. Even in the wild, they'll catch a lizard or dig for worms and stuff at the sanctuary, but it's not a main part of their diet. We have a lot of um, toothless monkeys. We call them our toothless wonders. People get them as pets, and they decide that they're going to pull out all their teeth because they bit their kid or tore off their ear, so they pull out all of their teeth, all their teeth. We have a lot of toothless monkeys. So we have crock pots going all day and all night of vegetables that we make for them. And they also get, we have rice every day and beans. So we're, we make a lot of that kind of food that's easier for them to eat. But they'll also take an apple and they'll scrape it and eat it. They'll take a macadamia nut and just, and they'll take biscuits and hold it under water to soak it. So they figured out good ways to eat on their own. But we also want to give them an easy way. And we have oatmeal and grits and cream of wheat and, you know, things. <laughs> Oh yes, so anointing, and they, so they anoint themselves with, it seems like anything with a really strong scent. They love green onions and they rub them all over themselves. They also do it with lemons and lime and they get that nice lemony fresh, you know, they smell yummy then. Well, I'm thinking with the limes and lemon citrus, maybe citronella keeps away, you know, bugs and stuff. And then they'll do it with garlic. I'm thinking vampires. I've never seen a vampire at Jungle Friends. They anoint with garlic. Then they all smell really <laughs> crazy. But they just go crazy with it. And we have videos of them anointing. And they just, they'll just anoint with two monkeys together all up in a ball of foaming at the mouth. First time I saw it, I thought, oh, my God, they're you know, rabies. <laughs> but, oh, we have like five minutes. Do you want to talk about the petition? Oh, yes. So, oh, wait, one more question. You had your, what was it? Yes. We only have New World monkeys. Oh, okay. Yes. What happens to the macaques? Uh, well, most of them are killed. There are a lot of sanctuaries. You've got macaques at your sanctuary. Yes. So I call Priscilla when I've got macaque calls. <laughs> Oh, we got plenty of time. Okay, go ahead. What about 10% oh, of the game? Does it ever freeze there? Yes, it, the it does. And our power bill in the winter is $10,000 a month because we, we have all of those smaller monkeys. We do have indoor buildings where we can lock them completely inside. Our geriatrics and diabetics also have indoor buildings. The other monkeys, that they don't want to go inside, but they have heat caves, we call them. So they have heat lamps. With the cave, thanks for coming, and they and blanket. So they, and they snuggle up together, and they get in their hammocks and snuggle together. But it does get cold there. I was surprised when I I moved there for the monkeys for the better climate, and I didn't want I wanted as much land because of hurricanes. You know, we just that's why I wasn't here yesterday. We had Hurricane Matthew swing by, <laughs> but um, but yes, it does get cold, and that's what we do. We have to heat them. Okay, so we do, we need, okay, so here's what we're doing right now. There's a bill right now that we've been to D.C. a couple of times called the Captive Primate Safety Act that we're trying to get enforced. It's, it's an amendment to the Lacey Act, and all we want to do is say comma and all non-human primates. So it's to stop, um, it's where it's legal to sell monkeys and buy monkeys they have to sell and buy monkeys in their own state. They can't be transported. Like, there's tons of breeders in Florida. Florida can no longer sell to anyone else and transport the monkey. They can only sell in the state of Florida. Now, we hate that they can still do that, but when I got started in the monkey business, there was only California was the only state over 20 years ago that you could not have a pet monkey. Every other state you could. Now it's, almost, it's more than half now where you cannot have a pet monkey. So we're moving slowly in the right direction, but this will help by no transporting monkeys from state to state, and it will be a federal law, so it'll be easier to enforce, 
and higher penalties. So we have a fact sheet about that, and we have a letter already written for you. You can just sign it and uh, fill out all of your information. We will get it to your legislators for you. And if you would do that, if you don't have time right now, we're at, you can find our Jungle Friends booth and come over and do that. But that would help us try to get this. Federal bills are difficult. So as many people as we can get to send letters would be great. So anybody, we've got a few more minutes. Any other questions on the Captive Primate Safety Act or monkeys? Uh -huh. I just want to comment that uh, I, I can tell you're a very determined woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, and, and, and I know they canceled all our flights, and we yeah, found a way to get here. Well, what we have to do with the hurricane? If we're in the cone, we say we move everybody inside. So we were in the cone, and then it moved out. You know, after we got all of the monkeys together, and are almost all of them in, and we just move them in anyway, err on the side of caution. So they're all inside in lab cages. The CDC actually donated a ton of lab cages, which I love. I always take them when we get monkeys from labs. I want all the cages. And CDC said they'd donate some. I said we'd take them all. I mean, April Truitt helped me with this, and uh, Theo did. So we got them all because then if you take the cages, it, then they're not going to put another monkey in there. The cages are very expensive. So they said, well, these are going to UGA and these are going somewhere. I said, can I take them all? He said, if you come now, I'll give them all to you. We took them all. So we have a ton of lab cages. So I took a video of them in these tiny little cages banging and screaming and it was Horrible, our, our volunteers and staff couldn't believe I said, now you know what it's like in the lab, you know, these monkeys. And I was going to put the video on Facebook, but then I thought, oh, it was too heart-wrenching. I didn't, but I may go ahead and do it so people see that. Someone said I should go ahead and do that. But they were so upset, you know, it was just, you know. But you put them in for the hurricane? Yes, because they're in these lab cages. Now, some of the, the monkeys were in the same lab cages that they came in. We put them, and they're like, oh, no, what happened, you know? How long does it take to put about 300 monkeys back in our cages? Two days <laughs> to get them out and put them in, and two days to get them out. And we're to safely transport them. Yes. people work in volunteering? We have about 20 staff and a lot of volunteers. We get a lot of groups come in, and um, people, that, regular volunteers, probably about 10. We need more volunteers. And you're all welcome to move to Florida, and we'll make you one of us. <laughs> but we do encourage all of you to come out, because to see them, you know, we're all advocating for animal rights, and we're doing everything we can, and we're, you know, against laboratory research, and we're against captive primates. But to go and be able to see the ones, that, you know, at the sanctuary, the lucky ones that did get out, and see them grooming with other monkeys and playing. It just gives you, it, it shows you why you're doing what you're doing. You know, it really does. So, you know, I know I'm lucky because I just, I live right in the middle of the sanctuary, so I can just look out my window and see everyone. But I know people that are just pushing paper and, you know, protesting and doing all that don't get to see that. So we have a lot of people that do that kind of thing come just to, okay, and get, you know, you know, get, to feel good again and see them see the difference that they've made. And we're having a vegan retreat April 1st. Don't be a fool, be cool, come to Jungle Friends, that's our slogan. And we've got uh, invitations for you. And it's a two-day event. You can come out and um, come to the vegan spiritual retreat and stay overnight and camp out. We've got you know a nice place to camp and some beds here and there too. So <clears throat> yes. Yes, if anyone knows Ray, she's an amazing speaker, so she'll be there. Anyone else have any other questions? Uh huh? Just a thank you for what you're doing. Oh, it's my pleasure, really. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, so sign the letters and um, see you. At, oh, we have wonderful monkey art, too. The monkey, monkey art is all the rage. You probably know that. <laughs> 
have 10, 15 minutes to transition, so you, you're oh, welcome okay. to stay and, and Okay, so you can sign the letters. Okay, and this?